In this film, we're going to be looking at some of the ways in which Logic Pro allows you to work with automation. So we're going to just be uh, starting basic and then looking at a couple of quite useful little tips and tricks that allow you to work quickly and to make some good automation choices. This is the track that we're going to be working on. Let's just hear it first. Okay, so let's start with something nice and straightforward. On this pad sound, I've got a Filter Freak plugin which is currently playing uh, or using a high pass filter, a four pole high pass filter, um, and we can see that um, the color frequency is currently set here, which is going to be giving us quite a thin sound. Now, the cutoff frequency is something I might want to automate, and if I were to do that, then obviously what will happen is we'll let through more frequency content, and because it's a high-pass filter, as that frequency point comes down, we'll hear a more full, rich, uh, low-frequency sound. The low frequencies will be heard. So let's suppose that's something I wanted to do. I could just simply just create or draw that line. If I press A to open automation mode, I can then come to the default parameter where it says volume. I can drop down here and find all of the instruments and plugins that are associated with this sound. And then within those, I can see their assorted parameters. So within Filter Freak, I can select the frequency and uh, I could then just draw a line. The moment I select this, particularly if we make it a bit big, uh, bigger, we can see the current uh, frequency choice. So at the moment we're at um, 1531 hertz. So so I could just simply create a line here and just draw another line at the end and uh, all would be well. We'd now get our uh, filter sweep coming down on that sound. So that's one way that I could work. I'm going to undo those two steps just to show you uh, another way in which it would be possible to create this line. There's a really useful feature within the uh, mix window where if I come to create track automation, what I can then do is to create two automation points at the region borders. Now what that does the moment I select that is it gives me not one, but actually two automation points at this uh, place. Now the reason why that's useful is because if I now grab this line and drag it up or down, I can create an offset to the existing bit of automation on either side uh, without affecting those starts and ends. Again, let's just undo that for a second, take that away altogether, and if this time I select mix cre uh, track um, create track automation, and this time I select create one automation point at the region borders. This time, if I drag this line, unfortunately, I get a nice sort of start point here, uh, but this uh, default value isn't going to reset at this point because there's only one automation node at this place. So the advantage of having two becomes clear when I want to be able to create an offset overall. Um, but then default back to the position where I was before. Now remember, what we were trying to do was to create a filter sweep. So having created this little offset, having put my endpoint here, I could easily just double click to knock this point out, and then I get the ramp, but I get the advantage of the fact that the filter is going to jump back. Now, of course, at that moment, if the uh, sound that's being filtered suddenly jumps back up, that might sound quite unnatural. But of course, it'd be very easy for me just to move this point along and potentially just create another point here um, just to make sure that the filter doesn't reset too quickly. So that's a, a really useful feature. Again, that's just in mix and then create track automation and then create two points at region borders. So that's one little automation trick, which has now given us our filter sweep. The other thing that I want to show you is to come down to this loop here, which is introduced in the second half of the track. Again, we'll just solo this. Um, this is a part that is uh, obviously adding a lot of momentum in the second half. Okay, now this little second moment in this loop here, which is uh, sort of panned across to the left-hand side, or at least heavily on the left, is kind of too loud, in my opinion. The loop works really nicely, but that sound really sticks out. We can hear that if we hear the whole track together from that point.
So it happens twice, once here and once here. So again, what I want to do is I want to come into automation mode. And this time what I want to do is to select a, a volume offset. Now, one thing I could do, of course, would be to click here and again here and here and here and then just create this uh, automation node which then allows the volume to drop at that point but that's kind of a hassle I've got to create four individual points and I've got to do the same thing over here um, as well so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of those points I'm going to open up the toolbar and I'm going to select the marquee tool and if what I then do is to drag over the area where I want to create a change and then I select the pointer tool instantly I get some points around that moment. So it's very easy for me to go through and just create the little offsets that I want simply by dragging over that area, coming back to the pointer tool and dropping the level here so that I can create the sorts of offsets that I want. And we can have a quieter one here and then a slightly louder one second time round. <laughs> Okay, that brings us neatly on to the next point, which is that I obviously want that to happen every time this bar uh, or this loop takes place. So I'm going to erase these three. Now, the moment I've introduced automation data on a track, whenever I throw something away that's on that track, Logic's gonna ask me if I also want to erase the automation data. Now, it just so happens there isn't actually any new automation data on these particular regions, the ones I'm about to throw away, but Logic doesn't know that. It, it knows that there's automation data and it's asking me what I want to do about it. So I'm gonna select don't erase it doesn't really matter in this case but what I do want to do when I start copying this loop is when I get asked this time whether or not I want to copy it I definitely do and if I select both of these together I'm going to have to uh, respond to that question a second time as well but that very neatly gets my automation copied um, along with the region itself okay let's look at one more thing now we've looked at this within the walkthrough within the uh, uh, magazine this month but nevertheless, let's just have a look at uh, what happens when we want to work with effects within uh, a project as well. On this pad, uh, I've got a long reverb. And what I want to be able to do is to manage the decay of that in bar 10, where I've got this gap between these two areas. Now, of course, we can see very easily if I want to add automation data to any of the individual tracks within this project, that's easy because there is a track created for every individual sound. That's not true by default with any auxiliary effects. So what I need to do now is to just introduce this effect simply by coming to the uh, auxiliary channel for this reverb and pressing the read button. And instantly that's going to create a track for this auxiliary within the project. And again, if I then open up automation, it's easy for me to uh, manage this moment. Now, what I want to do here is to have the reverb drop away in level and then recover up to bar 11. And we've already seen that, of course, I can click, create a point here, create another point and another one and another one and just simply create uh, the little ramp that I want. But I can use one of the techniques we've already looked at. If I use the pencil tool to create a region for this track, I can then come into my mix create track automation, my two points at this moment, which means I can then create a little drop in level right there. I can create a slightly longer uh, ramp, or at least I can drop the automation away in a sort of musical, natural way through this region, and then it will recover back to its starting position here. And I can do that for every single effect within my track. So if I come back to the first sequence, for instance, this one has got an auxiliary uh, delay sound on it. So what I'm going to do is to press read again, and this time I could, because they start, they both start at 0 dB as their level, I can take this region and I can copy it up to that track and I'll get the same response now from the delay effect as I would from the start. Now, of course, uh, this region is now called Vintage Reverb and if I have a few individual effects channels, it could get quite confusing. So I'm just going to rename that so that the delay uh, is named as part of that track and I can now see my effects very easily. And the advantage that that has as well is that not only have I managed that moment, but it means that I've got the opportunity potentially to copy those regions later into my track, so I'm managing them again at the end. And of course, because um, they're tied to individual regions, not only will it be very easy for me to take that automation with me whenever I move it or copy it somewhere else, if I suddenly decide that this bit of track actually needs to start much later in the project, I've now got regions around those automation nodes, which means that when I move uh, the track, the, uh, the relative positions of those effect settings will go with the project. In other words, the reverb and delay drop that I've created will always happen in that moment in the tune, even if I move the whole track later on. If I didn't create these regions, the automation data wouldn't move. So suddenly the reverb and delay levels would drop and it might be at a really unmusical place in the track because the track had moved, but the effects hadn't. <laughs>